What is a 2-1 temporary interest rate buy-down? You might have heard that term recently, but it's not a new concept. It's a strategy that comes in and out of vogue depending on market conditions. And given what's happened with interest rates over the last few years, most buyers are looking for ways to minimize the impact of higher interest rates and also use this as a win-win strategy for sellers to unload their properties and benefit the buyer as well at the same time. So a 2-1 temporary rate buy-down, as the name implies, is temporary. So what that means in the first year is your payment is going to be the equivalent of 2% lower than what the rate should have been the entire time. In the second year, your payment is going to be 1% lower than it could have been the entire time. And year three and beyond, it's going to be what it should have been the entire time. Now, make no mistake, lenders still have to qualify you based off of the real interest rate. The closing documents you sign at that closing table are going to show the real interest rate. So what happens is this is a seller-funded temporary buy-down. So whatever the cost of the buy-down is going to be, those funds would come from the seller via a seller closing cost contribution. What happens is those funds get set aside in an escrow account, and the servicer uses those funds to subsidize the payment in lieu of you making them yourself. So if you look at this chart that I have in front of you here, you'll notice a few things. This is an uh, assumption of a 400,000 loan amount, interest rates 7%. Again, take that with a grain of salt. Rates change throughout the day, every day, and would absolutely be different by the time you go to, uh, to view this. Uh, so just use this as an example. Now, this is a 30-year loan, and the monthly principal and interest portion of that payment is $2,661.21. Now, if you look at the next section down, you'll see the breakdown for year one, year two, and year three. So the effective interest rate that year one is 2% lower than that 7% forever rate. So the payment is based off of that 5% rate. That means that your payment is $513.92 lower as a result for those first 12 months. In the second year, the payment's based off of a 6% rate which means that you're saving $263 in one penny for the next 12 months. So when you combine the savings from the first year and the second year, the total subsidy is $9,323.16. So this is the amount of a seller closing cost contribution that you would need to receive in order to implement this strategy. And this is a very good strategy because what you're trying to do is keep your cost as low as possible during the first part of the loan, because as interest rates come down in the future, you're hoping to be able to refinance into your forever mortgage at that time. Now, whether that happens during the first two years of your current mortgage or not, no one can know for sure. But let's just say something great happens in the economy and interest rates come tumbling down and you are able to refinance way sooner than that first two-year time frame. You've got $9,300 in change sitting in an escrow account at the beginning. What happens if you haven't used it all? Well, that's the good news. Whatever balance you have in your uh, subsidy account for that rate buy-down, if it's unused when you either refinance or sell the property, that amount gets credited to the principal balance of the loan so that you owe less. So it is a very, very good thing. You don't use it or lose it. It is always there. So you benefit one way or the other. So you get to have your cake and eat it too. Worst case scenario, you go through the full two years and your payment as low as possible uh, during that two-year time frame. Best case scenario, interest rates come down within that two-year time frame. You're able to refinance into your forever mortgage, uh, and then you get whatever unused funds credited back to the payoff of your loan. So it's truly a great strategy as long as you are comfortable with your payment adjusting for the first few years. So make sure that your budget is set on the real payment because what happens if rates don't cooperate and you are not able to refinance and you're stuck at that 7% payment for the rest of your mortgage? I don't find that likely, but what if? That's what you should plan for. And if anything extra happens, 
That's just gravy. Now, a couple of things. Not all loan products allow for a, a temporary buy-down. Most of the common ones do, but there's going to be some exception. You know, FHA high balance, VA high balance, uh, for example, certain non-QM loans uh, don't allow for it. Uh, certain jumbo investors don't allow for it. But by and large, there's usually some kind of option for this. So as a mortgage broker that has 80 plus different options, I can usually find a solution that fits your needs. So if you found this helpful, you want to go through a specific situation, please reach out to my team and myself. We're licensed in so many states. We'd be honored to help. And then if you found this information helpful, make sure to like and subscribe so that you can help the channel and uh, hope to hear from you soon. Thank you so much.